Hello. Today we're going to look at the addendum for weak signal propagation, or as I'll just call it, propagation, because it's really about all kinds of propagation. This addendum is a little longer, so I may not number the things, but we'll still go over all the stuff you need to know for the new exam. And the first thing you need to know is something that really surprised me when I read about it at first. Uh, apparently, trees and shrubbery absorb radio energy, hence this little picture of a radio signal getting absorbed by a tree. Um, so. Uh, there's a reason why it's called sap, like on the on the tree and stuff. Sap saps the radio energy out of the sky. Um, so actually, because of this, the the test mit writers added a question to the test, which states that in winter, radio signals travel farther because there's no vegetation around to absorb the radio energy. So the signals travel much farther than they usually would. As funny and crazy as that may sound, it is apparently true, and you need to know it for the exam. Trees eat radio waves. All right. Um, going along in the vein of weather, the test is also going to ask you about how weather uh, uh, affects radio waves. You need to know that fog and rain, they usually don't really affect the 1 meter and 6 meter band signals. Oh, 10 meter, I'm sorry, not 1 meter. That was a typo. 10 meter and 6 meter band signals. They're not really affected by fog and rain. Doesn't matter. 6 meters. Bands. All right. At at microwave frequencies, though, you you can actually operate ham radio at microwave frequencies, and there is a danger of people getting cooked. But um, a little bit. At uh, microwave frequencies, precipitation in the sky, uh, or you know, on on the Earth, that decreases the range. Decreases the range of microwave signals, because as we all know, the water molecules. Um, well, water molecules absorb the RF energy at these frequencies, which should make sense because we all know if you microwave something with water, the water will start to boil. The water absorbs the energy. It gets heated up, and this, this absorbs all the RF energy. So precipitation isn't good for microwave signals. All right, another thing I may have mentioned, I don't remember, but I, it's, there's more emphasis on, it, on the new test now, so I'm going to mention it again. HF reflects signals very well off the ionosphere, usually. HF is very good at it. That's the main strength of HF, that it can reflect signals off the ionosphere, and you can talk to people in Australia, even if you live on the East Coast in the United States of America. On the other hand, VHF and UHF um, radio waves do not reflect well off of the ionosphere. They don't reflect. So just HF waves. All right, moving on. We're halfway done with this uh, longer addendum. First, let me write this on the board. UHF and VHF don't reflect off the ionosphere. Ionosphere. Oops. Ionos there we go. Ionosphere. Okay. Another thing that uh, is pretty cool, actually, um, you can take advantage of some of this HF signal propagation. You see, as a technician class operator, you can operate on phone or a voice, RTTY, which is a data mode, and you can operate on data modes on 10 meters only. On 10 meters. So that's phone which is voice, and RTTY slash data. We're going to get to more about digital modes in a couple sections. You'll learn about that. Um, you can uh, operate those on 10 meters. This is the only HF band where, as a technician, you get to operate on. Um, and uh, there's a trick here. There's a special trick for the test. Whenever a, test, uh, a question on the test asks you, on which HF bands do technician operators have privileges to operate using the blah 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 mode? The answer is always going to be 10 meters. On 10 meters, you can operate the special modes. On the other meters in HF, you can't. So when you get asked that question on the test, now you know the answer. It's always going to be 10 meters as of the time of this recording. OK. Another thing you need to know for ham radio, especially with weak signal propagation. Now, this is really about weak signals. Uh, what really comes in handy here is something that we call a beacon. So I mainly may not have explained this to you, but a beacon is basically a radio station that's transmitting on the air 
for purposes of so, so that you can use it to observe propagation or uh, related experimental activity. So the beacon will just transmit signals all the time, sort of like a, a normal beacon. A normal beacon, like a light beacon, might always transmit a light so that maybe sailors can see it or something. A radio beacon is always transmitting stuff. By listening at your house to the beacons, you can tell how good the bands are. For example, if you live in New York and you can hear a beacon from Hawaii, that means that apparently today you can talk to people from Hawaii. The propagation is working out to Hawaii. If you can't hear the beacon in Hawaii, that means propagation is bad to Hawaii. So you can use these beacons and compare how strong they are, how weak they are, how well you can hear them to know how the propagation is on a certain band or a certain frequency. You can hear bacon, you know it's strong, you know and you know you can you can have propagation to that part of the world. Propagation is open to that part of the world. There's propag yeah, you can talk to people in that area of the world. You know that the bands are in good condition. Propagation is good today. Alright, the last thing in this rather longer addendum video. I know you want to get on to studying the quiz. Um, 6 and 10 meters are two HF bands. So HF bands, as we said, reflect off the ionosphere. It turns out um, 6 and 10 meters, 10 meters is an HF band, 6 meters is not. They're a little more sensitive, and they sometimes don't reflect off the ionosphere. But they provide long-distance communication during the peak of the sunspot cycle. And I think I've explained the sunspot cycle, but um, radio waves are affected by the sunspot cycle. When there are a lot of sunspots, for some reason, uh, propagation is a lot better, and we, our signals can go farther. And this means that 6 and 10 meters, when sunspots are really high, they can finally um, provide long-distance communication. So that's it for this very long section on propagation. Now you can go on and take the quiz. And we'll study and take the quiz, and then we'll go on to the next video, which I believe is about outer space. Isn't that cool? Yes. All right, bye.